Hey folks, in this video we'll be talking about what is IR drop or sometimes called ohmic drop in electrochemistry. If you've taken cyclic voltammograms that look a little something like this, but should look a little bit more like this, then you're probably dealing with an IR drop sometimes called an uncompensated solution resistance problem, which is what we'll be talking about today. This video is broken up into several sections. We'll first talk about what is IR drop in electrochemistry and what causes IR drop. We'll then talk about how you can fix IR drop via some experimental techniques to minimize the IR drop in your electrochemical system. And lastly, if those methods, those experimental methods cannot be utilized, we'll talk about how a potentiostat can compensate for IR drop in your system. Timestamps are in the description below. Lastly, before we begin, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Okay, so what is IR drop in electrochemistry? IR drop is the decrease or drop in the effective potential that a potentiostat applies and measures to the working electrode interface as a result of solution resistance. This is a little bit easier to understand if we try to model the working electrode via a circuit model. We typically model the working electrode interface as a resistor and a capacitor in parallel, where the resistor, RCT, represents the charge transfer resistance, CDL, the capacitor, represents the electrical double layer. Between the working and the reference electrode, we have this resistor, RU, which represents the solution resistance. And then we have another resistor, R comp, which is in between the counter and reference electrode. For understanding IR drop, we mostly don't care about R comp and the counter electrode, but I've added it into this diagram just for completion. We will mostly be focusing within the Randall circuit between the reference and working electrode. If you remember from our How a Potential Stat Works video, if I apply plus one volt between the working and reference electrode, my potential stat is driving current between the counter and the working electrode until the potential difference between the working and reference electrode is plus one volt. If that doesn't make sense, I would encourage you to check out our video on how a potential stat works. Link is in the description below. If I apply plus one volt between the reference and the working electrode, I can break that plus one volt across the circuit elements of our Randall's circuit. So part of the potential is broken up between the electrode interface, which is between points B and C in this circuit diagram. And then part of the potential is across the solution resistance, which is points A and B. How much is across the solution resistance? Well, it's the current times the resistance via Ohm's law. So if I have a 300 ohm resistor for RU and I pass one milliamp of current, that is equal to 0.3 volts. So when I'm applying plus one volt across the working electrode interface across from the reference and working electrode, 0.3 volts is equal to the solution resistance. And then the remainder, 0.7 volts, is across points B and C, the working electrode interface. Well, this, this isn't good. If I'm a researcher and I want to apply plus one volt to drive my electrochemical reaction, I'm actually effectively applying 0.7 volts. I'm not applying plus one volt. 0.3 volts of my plus one volt is consumed in solution resistance. So this leads to a lot of inaccuracies in doing electrochemistry. This also applies to situations where you want to measure the potential. So if I gave you a digital multimeter with these two probes and asked you to measure the potential at the working electro interface, it would be fairly straightforward. I would take one probe and put it at point C and one probe and put it at point B and there I'd have it. I would measure the potential across the working electro interface. But physically, I can't actually get my probe to point B. And in our electrochemical system, the reference and the working sense leads are our two probes in our electrochemical system. I can't physically get my reference electrode to point B. There will always be some solution resistance that gets in the way. 
So how can we fix the IR drop? Well, we can't get rid of IR drop entirely, but there are experimental steps that we can take to minimize the IR drop. The first one is to increase the supporting electrolyte in our electrochemical solution. By adding more supporting electrolyte, we can increase the conductivity, which decreases the resistance. The second thing that we can do is position the working and reference electrodes closer to each other. Remember, I can't get the reference electrode to point B, but I can get closer to point B. So by improving the distance, by decreasing the distance between the reference and the working electrode, I can also decrease the IR drop. Lastly, let's not forget about the I in IR drop. There's the current. If we decrease the current by, say, decreasing the area of our working electrode, we can also decrease the IR drop. In fact, there are some microelectrode experiments that are done in highly resistive solvents that have such low currents that the IR drop is basically negligible and can be ignored when evaluating the data. Now, sometimes we can't make these physical adjustments to the electrochemical system, but there are some potential stats that can compensate for this IR drop. There are some potential stats with special IR compensation circuits that we can use if we can't make these adjustments to the physical electrochemical system. What you see in front of you is the simplified potential stat circuit from our How a Potential Stat Works video. Just as a quick summary, the potential between the working and reference electrode is set from the potential stat set point. We measure the current at the working drive electrode via a known measurement resistor and a voltmeter. Let's use the example that we've been working with. We apply plus one volt from the potential stack set point. So we have plus one volt between the working electrode and the reference electrode. We have 300 ohms of resistance between the working and reference electrode, and we pass one milliamp of current, which is measured at our uh, working drive electrode. Well, in a potential stat with an IR compensation circuit, the current that is measured at the working drive electrode through our known measurement resistor and voltmeter is fed into a multiplier. That multiplier has the ability to scale the voltage. That scaled voltage is then routed into a summing point, which is in between the inverting input of our high gain operational amplifier and the potential static set point. And what this does is the potential from the multiplier is added to the potential static set point, which effectively compensates for the IR drop. So in our example, we're passing one milliamp of current, we have 300 uh, ohms of solution resistance, that's 0.3 volts, which then is, gets added to our summing point where we have plus one volt from the potential static set point. So one volt plus 0.3 is plus 1.3 volts. And that is what our potential that is actually applying in our electrochemical system. Well, plus 1.3 volts, we can apply that across our Randall circuit. And again, we have 0.3 volts is uh, consumed by the solution resistance, but then we have plus one volt, which is now of being applied across the working electrode interface. So this is great. We are now actually applying plus one volt to our working electrode interface. What is unique about the IR compensation circuit is that the potential is added dynamically. It's a function of the measured current. So if we're doing a cyclic voltammetry experiment, for example, as we sweep the potential, we see this increase in the current. Let's say it's an oxidation reaction. Well, as the current increases, the IR drop is also increasing. You know, I times R, so if current is increasing, the IR drop is also increasing. But because the measured current is being measured at our known working resistor and our uh, voltmeter, which is getting fed into a multiplier, that multiplier's output potential to the summing point increases proportionally to the IR drop of our solution. And this allows the IR compensation circuit to accurately 
compensate and cancel out the effect of the IR drop dynamically. This can also be used to explain why is it in a cyclic voltammogram without IR compensation, but with a lot of solution resistance, you see this large peak splitting between the anodic and cathodic waves. As we sweep the potential, let's say just from zero to plus one volt, and we are oxidizing a molecule, as we begin to oxidize that molecule, we get an increase in the current. This leads to an increase in the IR drop. The current is increasing. But that means that our applied potential is not all equal, you know, whatever we're measuring on the, on the x-axis is not all at the working electro interface. More and more of that potential that we are applying is getting consumed by solution resistance. And this creates an elongation. We end up seeing the peak anodic wave at a much larger potential than we would otherwise observe. And this happens on the way back as we reverse the, scan, the direction of our scan we see the peak cathodic wave at a much more negative potential than what we would otherwise observe. As the current increases, it creates a kind of lag in the reduction wave, in the cathodic wave. So that is one reason why an IR compensation circuit is very important. It's also a reason why if you don't have one and you have a lot of solution resistance in your system, it's very difficult to accurately measure the redox potential in your cyclic voltammogram. Now to use IR compensation with a potential that that has an IR compensation circuit, you need to adjust the multiplier based on the solution resistance. And in our case, the solution resistance was 300 ohms. But what if you don't know what the solution resistance is? You need to know what the solution resistance is or at least have a good estimate. Well, in our next video, we're going to talk about several techniques that you can use to determine the solution resistance. Link to that video is in the description below. As always, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section and like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more electrochemistry content. All right, I'll see you soon.